Well, here we are. We're starting out with a 30 gallon drum and a 45 gallon drum. And Tom, do you want to explain here what we've done to this one over here? Okay, so you take a regular 30 gallon drum, you cut the top off of it um, in this fashion here, not directly off. And I'll explain, well, the, the cut goes around the top roughly right underneath the lid, but a section of it you cut deeper, and I'll explain that later. Okay. Okay, so then you end up with a 30 gallon drum that's open at the top. You cut a hole in the bottom of it, in the center of the bottom of it, three inches in diameter. And then on the bottom of the drum is welded three legs to stand it upright steadily in the larger barrel. As well, there's a, uh, a draft baffle welded on the bottom of the drum to direct air to go into the bottom of the drum into the hole in the bottom of the drum. Okay. Nextly, this is all to make this drum fit inside the larger 45 gallon drum. Okay. This is the 45 gallon drum and all that's been done to it is legs have been added to the bottom and a hole cut in the side corresponding to the shape of that draft baffling that's welded on the bottom of the small drum. Now additionally, uh, the 45 gallon drum has a heat shield wrapped around it, which is this here, and the separation is roughly to leave an inch to an inch and a half of airspace between the drum and the heat baffle. Okay, can you describe the exit hole there, the uh, yes. vent hole? The exit hole, basically it's your flue, is located at least halfway down the drum. Further down the drum is possibly better, but halfway down the drum at least. And it comes out the side of the drum via a 90 degree elbow. This is a 5 inch diameter pipe, by the way. So it comes out of the drum, 90 degree elbow, 5 inch diameter pipe, and preferably at least 10 feet of flue to provide really good draft control, or really good draft, I should say. Okay. Good. Next, the 30 gallon drum is lowered. Can you handle it yourself, Tom? Yeah. 30 gallon drum is lowered into the 5 gallon. Like so. And it sits. Ideally, it's sitting concentrically within the larger drum, so there's an, an air space or a smoke space of equal width all the way around between the two drums. Okay, and can you talk about the high yes. ridge at the back? Now there's a ridge, and this goes back to what we were describing with the lid that was cut off. A ridge higher than the rest of the lip of the inside barrel. A ridge is left adjacent to the area where the flue exits, and this is to encourage a more even flow of exhaust gas out of the top of the inner drum and around its lip and down the edges or the inside of the, the two drums. Okay, and then these things line up together at the bottom here, right? That's correct. When the inside drum was put in, or when the smaller drum was put on the inside of the bigger one, it was lowered into place in such a way that the, the baffle plate matches the hole, so you have a hole to get into the the uh, the lower part of the drum. Okay. What happens next is a three inch diameter pipe is then lowered into the middle of the smaller drum and placed in the hole. It's a tight fit into the hole so that it stays in there. 
and this is just for purposes of shaping the fuel pack which is going to be loaded into this drum and packed down okay good and today's fuel today's fuel is going to be a mixture of bamboo and sawdust so the exact uh, ratio is going to be hard to determine but it's probably going to be fairly close to 60% bamboo and 40% sawdust. Okay, good. Over here we have our dry, dry sawdust. Ideally dry sawdust. This stuff is not perfectly dry. It has moisture content in it. But it's dry enough to burn. Okay, good. Let's just see how we load that thing up. Okay. Bamboo is loaded in endwise into a smaller drum. All around the space between the three inch tube and the outside of the inner drum. This requires a bit of uh, attention to detail to make sure that all the bamboo is standing up more or less straight, not crossing, not interfering with the center pipe. The center pipe, by the way, is in here to provide, uh, to provide a draft up through the center of the fuel stack. So the draft air. actually rises up through the middle end. That's right. Mm -hmm. This pipe will be removed once the, once the fuel is stacked in here. important when you make the center tube to make it fit tightly in the hole in the bottom of the drum. The more you fill up, the better, uh, the longer a burn you'll get and the more heat you'll get out of it. So the air spaces, the, the fuel will be burnt more quickly. So it's a bit time consuming, but it's uh, better spent it's important. now. Eh? Yeah, yeah, better spent now. It's important. Okay, so, so Tom, here our drum, our drum is now loaded as best we can with uh, bamboo sticks and sawdust. You can see the bamboo in there. These are bamboo tops. Yeah. Okay. So it's very important that the bamboo be cut to the right size. That it's that it's up to the edge of the inner drum but no higher and that the spacing between the lid that you're going to put on the outer the outer drum the large lid this gets put on the outer drum once this is removed right the spacing between this lid and the top of the inside barrel is critical to be so that's this distance from this edge up to this edge that's correct this distance here yes how much should that be um the optimal is, uh, there's some trial and error involved here, yeah. but it's no more than three inches and no less than one inch. Okay. One to three inches. Yes. And then the height of this heat exchanger above that is about the it's same. It's about one, one and a half inches. So the heat exchanger baffle clears the top of the drum by one and a half inches to allow proper airflow over the top of the okay. drum. Okay. Great. Now... Time to remove the center core. The center core now comes out, we hope, uh, successfully without uh, fuel falling down and obstructing the hole. That's really important. Okay, so here you see a well-defined center hole. Flame is going to come up through that and start burning the, the fuel pack from the inside out. Now that it's loaded, the lid can be put on.
lid is on. And we have our, uh, this here is a small amount of uh, firewood which is used to start the fire underneath the draft hole in the drum. This hat-like piece of metal forms the top of your heat exchanger, and that's on there. Now by the process of convection, air will be drawn in at the bottom of the outside uh, ductwork, around, around the hot outside drum, and will be concentrated around the top of it and come out this hole at the top. And that's heat? Uh, without smoke. That yes, this will be a this will be fresh air, hot fresh air is coming out here. Right. Great. I can already feel a bit. So it's uh, ten minutes later, I would say ten minutes since we lighted, and what's happening now is the fire is starting to go in the center of the fuel. And you can tell that it's starting to burn really well because we got a lot of combustion now. And the gray smoke is water vapor that's contained in the bamboo and in the uh, sawdust fuel. And the fire is heating up that water and evaporating it now. That's your gray smoke. And it's coming out as gray smoke. When you have the gray smoke like this, you're evaporating water. So the thing is getting warmer now. You can feel that this stovepipe is getting too hot to touch. And our heat exchanger now is starting to really push out heat. You can start to feel it. It's quite exciting. Lots of heat coming out of it now. Oh, look at that. That's nice, Tom. Ooh. Hot air. This is without forced air of any kind. This is just convective flow around the drum. So no motorized fan at this point. No electricity. No electricity. And if you make your duct work correct with the right angles coming off of the top, you'll get even more flow than what we have going on here. And I'm standing about a meter away now and feeling the heat coming from here. The smoke is uh, cleared up. The water is burned out, burning out of the fuel, and now we're starting to get some real heat from inside there. Yeah. That's nice. It actually, here. How about my hair? It's good. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's a very large <laughs> hair dryer. <laughs> That's very cool. Now here. Yep. That might produce smoke. Ow, fuck, that's hot. There we go. Whoa. Nice. Very hot, eh? Very hot. What, uh, what uh, temperatures do you suppose that is? 
at the moment without burning a leaf in there uh, the air coming out of there was well over 300 degrees the leaf is burning from the heat Do you think we can have a look at the burn while we got that off? Can we do that or? Just a minute. Oh, it's so hot. Wow, fabulous. Look at that. Brilliant. So you can see the core burning. Just I want to get the bamboo here, Tom. It's really burning hot. Lovely. Ooh. Great. Let's put one more leaf in there. <laughs> <laughs> just just for fun. We are older than five. Well, we are. Not, <laughs> we are. What I've got here is rock wool. It's a uh, high density thermal insulation. And we're going to do two things. We're going to wrap the uh, stove in the rock wool. And we're going to wrap the cap in the rock wool. And we're going to show the installation of a damper that we put in. So here's our unit wrapped in uh, high density insulation just around the heat exchanger. And now we're going to insulate the cap and put the cap on as well. Okay, here we are with our insulation wrapped around nicely and the cap on and now we'll insulate the top as well. All right, here's the whole thing put together. And if we put this insulation on, we're going to get all the heat to come out of the uh, vent pipe with no heat loss radiating out. Uh, it'll just provide a great deal more efficiency for the unit. Now we got one other change that we made down here. That's quite an important one. We've installed a little damper at the bottom of the entrance hole. And this is uh, at the entrance into the fire pit. And this will allow control of the flame. You can prop it open. You can put it part of the way. You can close it all the way. And experiment with getting the right combustion with the damper up into the unit. We're not going to put a damper on the back pipe. There'll be no damper on the back pipe here because we're worried about closing off and getting an explosion hazard inside the unit. So this is the whole thing all ready to go now. Uh, fully insulated and ready to use.